protest, and specifically this is looking at protest over the Vietnam War. So we're going to see back at home in America protests against the war, especially with the commitment of more and more United States combat forces. The thing is, if you rewind to the 1950s and the Korean War, dissenters had really been intimidated by McCarthyism and the Second Red Scare, and so they didn't try to protest too much over America's commitment to the Cold War. But that's not the case by the time we get into Vietnam. We're going to see the first national anti-war march takes place in Washington on April 17th of 1965. They would assemble at the Washington Monument for speeches. We get different groups that protest the Vietnam War, uh, such as like the realists, um, that's in quotes. The realists basically argued the entire war was a mistake. Um, for instance, a lot of those who are against the war supported like the anti, they supported like anti-Soviet commit containment in Europe, but they felt like the United States didn't have any kind of real vital interest in South Vietnam. And so they felt like people were misreading the situation and basically wasting United States lives and resources. One big name that was involved in these anti-war protests is actually Martin Luther King Jr. He offered one of the strongest condemnations of the war, specifically in a speech at uh, New York Riverside Church on April 4th of 1967. This speech was actually a deeply Christian argument for policies of like negotiation and reconciliation rather than war. The thing is when you're looking at these protests against the Vietnam War, from 1966 to 1967, this anti-war activity is really going to change. It goes from being like respectful protests to much more direct confrontations, partly because the respectful protests weren't being listened to. And so protesters are going to do things like lay down in front of trains that were carrying munitions. Um, they tried to dispense medical and humanitarian aid even handedly to both North Vietnamese troops and South Vietnamese troops. We also get the tone of both sides becomes even nastier. Dissenters were called half bright, but dissenters would then argue back, and I quote, how many kids did you kill today, LBJ? But most of this anger was directed specifically at the military draft administered by the selective service system. Now, supposedly the draft was supposed to pick the young men who could best serve the nation as soldiers and defer induction of those with vital skills. However, as the war is expanding, it becomes this awkward position because the Democrats and LBJ's administration are trying to hold the allegiance of the middle class and try to find ways to exempt their sons from service. So like for instance, full-time college enrollment was great for deferment. Um, also, if you had the right medical diagnosis, great for a deferment. As a result of this though, enlistees and um, draftees tend to be from like small town America and a lot of times they were working class youth and on top of that they were really young. On average they were like 19 to 20 years old whereas like World War II the people who were being drafted on average were in their mid-20s. Um, in fact my father-in-law who I mentioned before um, he was not drafted but knowing that he could possibly be drafted, he uh, preemptively enlisted in the Navy, trying to avoid actual like combat through like the army and everything. Um, of course, if you join the Navy though, there's a chance that you might be selected to become a Marine. And when he was actually sitting in the office where they decided that the man to his right and the man to his left were both picked to become a Marine and he was not. So, um, and he was from small town America. He was working class. Like it's very much stereotypical of this time and those who were drafted or felt like they had to enlist. The thing is, this is going to cause resentment. And 
this resentment created by the draft becomes this wedge really eroding the long-standing alliance between like the working class Americans and the Democratic Party. We're also going to see in particular the African-American community are going to supply more than their fair share of combat soldiers. For instance, African-Americans made up about 11% of the population, and yet 24% of the soldiers who died in Vietnam were black. However, draft resistance provided a direct way of protesting against the war. You get some men like burning their small paper cards that indicated their selective service classification, Several thousand others moved to Canada. Thousands would also describe like religious and ethnical op opposition to the war in their applications. And then you even have a small number who went to jail to refuse to cooperate. Resistance is basically mounting throughout the decade. Um, eventually we're gonna get a slightly different draft system and that draft system is actually here. I'm gonna talk about that draft system in a bit, but I want you to take a second and I wanted you to find if you would have been drafted in the second draft system. So technically there were three different drafts in the second draft system, one in 1969, one in 1970, and one in 1971. And so this is the first, and this would have been for men who were born between 1944 to 1950. And basically it was a lottery system. And so for instance, if you were born on January 1st, your number was 305. And so basically if your number was one, which was, you can see on here, September 14th, you were the first group to get drafted. If you were two, then you were the second group to get drafted. Two was actually April 24th. And so I want you to go through and I want you to find what your number is. Uh, mine, for example, I was born on June 1st, so I was 249. So that's pretty late. And that's the thing you can see up here at the top, 195 was actually the last group they took from these years. So I would not have been drafted if I had been a male born between those years during that time period. But I want you to see if you would have. So all I wanted you to do was to find your birthday and what was your draft number.